Hello, YouTube. It's the Utopian Buddha, where I... Oh, welcome to my chess stream, where I inspire you to be your best chess player. This is also a chess philosophy stream. Uh, I'm an author. I've written a bunch of books on philosophy and stuff. So, um, yeah, so, so we're going to talk about the topic of today's chess stream, which is the revolutionary antithesis of the Holocaust and childhood hunger. That's the topic of this talk that I'm going to be kind of delivering as I play chess. So culture, right? Cultures are, are built upon ideas and memes. So, so what a meme, M-E-M-E, -E, what a meme is, according to Richard Dawkins, is like an idea complex that activates your emotions, your instincts, all kinds of motivations, right? And there are many memes floating around human culture. Um, so, so culture is, so, so you know, and, and power and propaganda and all kinds of factors influence which memes, like they're like viruses or, or germs that spread through populations, right? So um, obviously when the Nazis took over in Germany, they created a, a killing children meme, right? Like a bad guy meme, right? They were bad people. Um, so, so I'm thinking, all right, so, so that's how dark culture can get. Let's imagine the opposite of that darkness. Like, how light can we get? And, and, and the opposite of Nazi culture in my book is, is ending childhood hunger, right? Like, is a culture that, that's, devoted, that's devoting itself to the practice of altruistic capitalism and ending childhood hunger and stuff. So that's what I think. That's, that's, that's my idea, guys. Okay, well, that, that was a lot. I delivered that a lot. Cool. I was, okay, so maybe I should elucidate or like, you know, exfoliate, <laughs> exfoliate this subject, right? Um, let me see. Oh, okay, he's coming after me now. I'm just going to do a good old fashioned boop. All right. So, um. So let me exfoliate this idea. <laughs> um, so, okay, so how do you build a culture that's devoted to ending childhood hunger, right? Um, I think altruistic capitalism is an idea I've been working with a lot recently. You know, just this idea of, oh shit, okay, wait, 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 we're good. It's just this idea of um, building a culture where all of the individuals... Um, you know, make the, the firm commitment together to shop only at altruistic businesses. You know, you only want to shop at altruistic businesses. Now I'm getting into the game. You know, like businesses that donate a large percent of their percentage of their profits to ver to various charitable causes like ending childhood hunger, you know. I think that's important. I think that's very important. Like you want a saintly culture. You want a culture that aspires to the highest ideals of the human race. You don't want all this nonsense that's happening all around the planet, dude. All these people killing each other for no damn reason, dude. It makes no sense, dude. Just because they think God told them to kill people, you know? If you have a, if your God tells you to kill people, you're not listening to God. I guarantee you that. You're listening to something else. You're listening to something else. People got issues. That's the problem. Everyone's got issues. Everyone's got too many issues, right? And they're also focused on dealing with their own issues. They don't realize that other people got issues too. So everyone's like, everyone's selfish, man. Like, it's really sad how selfish this human race is, dude. It's ridiculously sad, in fact, how selfish people are. How narrow-minded and petty, dude. People are petty, dude. They focus on such insignificantly small issues, right? Oh my God, like, like one tiny like issue in their little lives gets like out of whack and they have a meltdown because of it, right? It's because their vision isn't broad enough. Your vision isn't broad enough if you think, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Your vision isn't broad enough if you have a meltdown over like your kid being late to class or something, you know, or your kid, you know, getting a detention. Yeah, that's something you need to deal with in a calm and responsible way, but it's nothing to have a meltdown over. People just have issues, man. And I think my mom, I'm going to bring my mom into this. My mom figured this out as she got older, dude. She used to flip out on me over the littlest things, dude. The 
the most insignificantly little things. Okay, maybe I did some bad things every now and then. So I probably deserve to get in trouble. But um, sometimes I probably deserve to get in trouble. But, but my mom flipped out over little things very frequently. It's because they don't have as... Okay, okay, now I'm hating on my mom. But she's gotten better as she's gotten older. But it's because people don't realize how expansive reality is. How big this world is, right? There are billions of people on this planet and you're making an issue out of this little thing. You know, oh, this picture is here versus there. Or like, oh, you know, like you're making issues out of such small, insignificant matters, dude. Why? Because your vision isn't big enough and your soul isn't selfless enough. I said it, right? People need to be more selfless, man. I mean, I'm all for being selfish. I've been self selfish most of my life personally. So I'm not very, I'm not being judgmental in that sense, right? And I'm still selfish, but I'm a lot less selfish than I used to be. I'll, I'll guarantee you that. Okay, this is kind of turning into a rant. But basically what I'm saying is people need to get over themselves, dude. Maybe I need to get over myself, shit. We all got, we all got things we're working on. But it's just like you have to realize that that so, there are people in this world who are going through a lot, very different experiences than you, especially people in the first world, man. They call it first world problems, dude. All these people got first world problems, dude. And I'll say this, especially white people, dude, they just don't get it, man. A lot of white people, okay, that's not, that's a generalization. A lot of brown people don't get it and a lot of black people don't get it either. But white people, a lot of white people don't get it either, dude. You know, they're, they're, they got all these first world issues. First world problems. That's what it's called, man. First world problems. And I got first world problems. I'm in the first world. I got first person, first world problems. I'm not saying first world problems aren't a problem. They are problems. They're just not as big of problems, right? There's a lot bigger problems. There's a lot more going on in this world than just you and your little problems. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I'm getting a little, I'm, I'm starting to rant a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, but it's true. What I'm saying is true. Maybe I shouldn't be so emotional about it, but it's actually like, it's ridiculous how narrow-minded people are, how, how small their vision is, how, how they focus on such small things, right? It's a result of our tribal psychology, right? We have evolved in small communities, small tribes for millions of years. So in order to elevate ourselves beyond that level of consciousness, we need we need meditation, reflection, books. We need to be able to read books about things that are going on all over the planet and in your neighborhood and all over the place, right? You need education, edumacation. Education is everything. Not everything, but education is a lot of, the, all kinds of education. Eastern education, like, like meditation, Western education, like books and, and science. We need the education. Check out this move I'm about to do. I'm about to bring my swing my bishop up to G5 and, and threaten his bishop. His bishop, bishop won't be able to take... Okay, watch, watch. Okay, fine. Take it, take it. That's a set. His bishop's not going to be able to take me because then it'll, that'll expose his king. So now I'm going to crash into his, um, into his king right here. His bishop can't take me. So now he's worried, dude. People have small visions, man. They're focused on their, they're focused on themselves. Oh, checkmate! Boom. They're so selflessness, the capacity to aspire to the higher, most noble ideals of the human race depends. It depends upon um, having a broad vision. You can't be selfless if you if you only think about yourself obviously it's like I'm saying something like science. I'm not saying rocket science here some for some reason people don't get it it's ridiculous <laughs> man this did just turn into a rant but I want to go back to the original topic ending childhood hunger dude the opposite of the holocaust a culture that is the antithesis of the holocaust I stand by that I'm dedicating my life to that the opposite of the holocaust ending childhood hunger because this is like an unintentional holocaust almost right like the the death of millions of children every year 
I think, what's the statistics? I think 5 million children die every year of hunger-related causes. Easily solvable hunger-related causes. But it's gotten a lot better. In the 1960s, it used to be uh, 20 million. That's on Peter Singer's book. Uh, that's in Peter Singer's book, The Life You Can Save. Peter Singer is this Princeton philosopher. Talked about altruistic stuff. All right, let's go in. Ooh. Okay, wait, I, I see an opening here. So if he takes there, I take there. Oh. Um. Hmm, I don't know. What I, so if he takes, if he takes my knight, and I take his, then he's gonna be able to swing his queen up and check me. But I suppose that's fine. Whatever. The revolutionary antithesis of Holocaust, of the Holocaust. That's what I stand by. That sounds really like dramatic. It's not that dramatic though. All right. Let's see. The revolutionary antithesis. It's just some big words. I use big words sometimes. I write books, guys. I, I write books. And, and so, you know, I've noticed that, right? I didn't used to write, use big words. Like, I don't even use big words. I just use I just use words that aren't used very frequently in everyday conversation. And that's a result of writing a lot of books, right? Like, your brain just kind of starts uh, learning vocabulary tricks and stuff. This guy's getting torn apart, dude. Plus four. The revolution. Dude, I think I just checkmated this guy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I, how did I lose it? Oh, no. He can run over there. Okay, never mind. He's running. All right. Let's just take this guy here. Oh, snap. If I check him, okay, so if I move up to the right one with my queen, I'll be able to, ch oh, no, 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 then his queen's going to take me, so I'm just going to move up. Oh, no! All right, I'm ending the chess stream.